Okay, 11 weeks until Abu Dhabi Marathon, and I'm starting to look like a runner, which is great. The weight is coming off as a byproduct of adding the volume and the progressions that are going in there, so that's great. When you try to, when you sort of get into training for a race, you wanna be as light as possible, of course you do, to a point, but if you try to focus on that and calorie counting and restricting your diet and you're trying to add volume and intensity to the training, doing both of those together is a recipe for disaster. And there's a few times for me, I, I've just peaked too soon. And therefore I've been on the limit three, four, five, as much as six weeks out. And what happens is you're absolutely exhausted after your morning recovery run or easy run. And so I've had to get back in bed and then you have to try to eat your way out of the problem, which of course puts weight back on and then you end up getting on the start line. Um, a little bit like a boxer where you've cut weight for the day before and then, on, and then you've been able to eat all that night and you come in sort of 15 kilograms heavier, heavier, but not to that extreme. But this week, very simple. Yesterday was the All In Run Club 5K, which is going great, great turnout. And you know, some people there are running PBs of two, three minutes, as much as five minutes. And there's young, there's old, there's, oh, there's everybody. And it's fantastic. Um, but they, that means, because that's on Sunday, I've got to adjust my schedule to do Tuesdays and Saturdays. So last Tuesday was the interval session and Saturday was the long run, which became sort of a medium long run. So very quickly, Monday easy run, just out there, super easy, still hot, going slow, 46 minutes. Tuesday, interval session. So get this, three times 10 minutes, two times five minutes, and then seven times one minute with 60 seconds rest in between the 10 minutes and the five minutes and then 30 seconds rest in between the one minute intervals. 47 minutes of hard work. Why 47 minutes? I hear you ask. Because I'm, I was about to say I'm thinking in my head and I say that a lot and it's like, where else can you think? Uh, I'm going into that and I'm, I've done the 20 minutes of hard work. I've done the 24 minutes of hard work. I've done the 30 minutes of hard work. I've done the 35 minutes of hard work interval session. And so the natural thing is, okay, build it up to four times 10 minutes. And it's an easier way to go at that session of 40 minutes because the longer reps don't take it out of you as much as the shorter reps. If I was to do 40 times one minute, it's gonna be way harder session than four times 10 minutes because you're going slower in the 10 minute rep. So that was the plan. So I programmed into my watch five times 10 minutes just because, and I always do this, what about if I'm feeling great and I can push a little bit more? It's good to be the type of person, the type of athlete who can do these two things. When you're feeling good, you've got to assess that and know what it feels like. When you're feeling good, you can steal a little bit of extra fitness by adding a little bit more. And when you, and simultaneously, you also know how to, when to call it a day. So it's too much. And the way you should look at it, if it's 400 meters, minute intervals, etc., you should always feel like you can do another couple. With 10 minute intervals, you should feel as if you could do another five or 10 minutes if pushed. So you always wanna feel like you can do a little bit more and that's kind of stretching the elastic band but not too much so that it snaps. And that's the general philosophy of training, then recovering and going again, etc. If you can then, if you then feel as if it's got a little bit more giving it and you can put a little bit more in and you've got it programmed into the watch and you can do that. So it's exactly what happened. After three reps, I felt, well, I could, do, I could probably do another one, but I'm probably safer doing two times five minutes. So that's what I did. And I gave myself 60 seconds in between, which was great, felt great. And I'll show it to you on the, on the heart rate map. And that meant that I could go faster, which is a better training stimulus to play with the paces and the zones. And then after those two, two five minutes, I thought, okay, let's see if I can do five times one minute. And eventually that became seven times one minute. Now you've got to be careful there that adrenaline doesn't kick in and you feel, oh, I'm flying and therefore, because that will, it's another kind of double-edged sword that can catch you out. So you need to know when that's that. But equally, if you look at the training program over the 12, 13 weeks of what you can do, I always say 13 weeks of specific training and 11 and a half weeks of that is training and then nine, 10 days of taper. Then of those 11 and a half weeks, you've got 10 long runs and 10 interval sessions. Some days you've got to bring it back and you're not able to do the session, but the fact that you're not injured and you're not ill, great. Some days you can afford to take a little bit more. So that might adjust the target, 
if you've done a couple of those, it might adjust the target that you were uh, aiming for initially when you started the programmer. And that target, whatever you're aiming for in your race, that should always be a negotiable because you're aiming to get the very best out of your body. And this is exactly what I saw at the weekend at Berlin. I'll come to that in a second. Anyway, that went great. 47 minutes of hard work. Then Wednesday was the rest. Always have a rest day every single week. And then the evening, went across to the All In Run Club intervals, which was superb. Um, and then Thursday recovery run, 49 minutes, not trying to impress anybody, just out there going easy, uh, recovery run. And then Friday, easy run, 10K just under 50 minutes. And then Saturday was a medium long run. So I still haven't got the nutrition, waiting for a package. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, how can I sort of make this? And it, very similar to the week before, I wanted something that was kind of playing with different gradients. So I'm on the treadmill still because it's too hot outside. So I did 2K at, on a hill and then 3K on a steeper hill. So 2K, 3K, 2K, 3K, 2K, 3K, 1K. And that was 16K, medium long run, nicely working up and watching the heart rate go up. But on those 5Ks, so 2K, 3K, oh sorry, 3K, 2K, <laughs> on those 5Ks, it's kind of like you can see it trending upwards higher highs and higher lows, which means that it's about to kind of go into the un uncontrollable zone. So something to watch, but I felt good from that. And I think once I add gels or sports drink to that, I'm gonna fly and the muscle damage won't be as much. So I'll be able to do, go harder and know that I've got more capacity. So once I start to make those into 25K, 30K long runs, just feel so much easier um, because I've got the nutrition and it's a nice little trick that, but again, you probably favor the consistency and getting the stomach ready to handle the gels or the sports drink, interval session, long run, and then doing all the recovery runs and easy runs first thing in the morning fasted. It's always been my strategy, works really well and helps you get in that 80 grams of carbohydrate. And then on the Sunday, it was all in run club. I tried to run it as easy as I can. For some reason I get carried away. Uh, I need to be first because I need to be timing everybody as they're coming in and giving everybody water. Uh, but I ran that in just over 20 minutes. So it's not too bad, but it's hot. It's like 32, 33 degrees. So next week is at the beach. So we've got a new location opening at the beach, which is going to be fun because afterwards we can go in the sea. So hopefully we'll get some, um, some content from that. But yeah, I was looking at, the, I was looking at Berlin Marathon and I put a video out yesterday, so you can watch that and you can watch my thoughts about it. But this is, in short, I always say that and then give you the long version, but I think people aim safe. And I think, you know, sub three hours has always been a thing. I think everybody is capable of sub three hours. It's just a matter of training and the amount of time and commitment that you can put into it and how important it is to you. And I think if you can run sub three hour marathon, if you run 259, it's just a matter of training before you can run 15 seconds per kilometer faster and, and run 248. It really is just a matter of training. And, and I, I saw that from the times. If you, look, if you look at the amount of people that finished between two hours 55 and three hours, it's an incredible amount of people that are just dipping under three hours because they've trained for that 415 or per kilometer or 652 per mile and and that's what they're always going to get because that's what they're training towards. Whereas if they'd gone for it and, you know, gone a little bit tougher in the training or a little bit harder in the training, and I'm not saying it's not a great thing to do. I love the fact that people are running. I love the fact that people are playing paddle tennis. I can see them playing hockey, football, cricket, everything out there. And I love it. that Sports people are not going to give you a hard time. Um, they're good people and they're going to act considerately. Um, so I'll always advocate running. But I just think if, if, you, if you consider yourself a serious runner, and what is that even? So it's not, it's a mood point, but I think that people can be pushing harder. That's all I'll say on it. So yeah, so that's 11 weeks to go and I am absolutely loving it. 